on this episode of The Pulse. Off-campus safety at Sacred Heart. Should you be concerned after Sacred Heart's latest crime alert? We've got new dining options in the Pioneer Village and the reopening of Reds. And the heart of downtown Fairfield returns. These stories and more in Sacred Heart's very own monthly news show. I'm Madeline Gerandola. And I'm Will Pesek. And you're watching The Pulse. From Sacred Heart University in Fairfield, Connecticut, this is The Pulse. Tonight's top story. Madison Avenue of Richport looks like every other suburban neighborhood. But how does this change at night? Jackie Shampoo looks at Sacred Heart's off-campus safety after a student was attacked in their off-campus home. Sacred Heart and its surrounding suburbs are a place of freedom and excitement for its students. But for one student, this image quickly changed. A few weeks ago, a man knocked on the door of a student's home and forced entry while holding a gun. The student was assaulted before the attacker fled the scene. Soon after the crime, SHU Public Safety sent an email describing the event. The email also gave a list of precautionary measures that public safety recommends for off-campus residents, including the SHU Safe app. SHU senior and resident of an off-campus home, Ellie McAuliffe, was shaken by the crime alert. When I initially got the email that there was an, uh, an attack on an off-campus residence, I was definitely nervous at first. Um, the location was still unknown, so I didn't know if it was my neighbors or if it was farther into Bridgeport. Um, so that was definitely scary. Um, it was also scary being in a house with just two other girls. Um, we don't have any protection other than like the locks on our doors, so that definitely made me nervous. I also lived here in the summer by myself, so a bunch of thoughts flood into my head about who I have, who I have answered the door for. So it was definitely nerve-wracking. 50% of Sacred Heart students lease houses off campus in the Madison Ave North End area of Bridgeport. Some of these students have taken precautionary measures themselves by installing surveillance cameras on their homes. Um, something that me and my roommates use to feel a little bit more safe in our off-campus residence is our ring camera. Um, we just installed it actually, so we've been living here for almost a full year and we only installed it this past month. Students on campus have many layers of protection, such as key cards, residence assistance, and public safety. The off-campus students don't want to lose touch of this safe and comfortable environment. Gary McNamara, Executive Director of Public Safety and Government Affairs at SHU, had this advice for off-campus students. Well, I, I mean, you know, any, anytime you have an incident, especially an incident like that, you want to make sure that everybody's aware of it. Uh, you know, you don't, you don't send messages to scare people, even though these, these incidents and the details of the incident can be quite disturbing and concerning but you want to make sure that people are aware of it. Um, number one, you want to make sure that to, if they are aware of it, they can take precautions. And that's really an important decision that we made to make sure we get that information out. Gary also discussed the difference between on and off campus living. Yeah, I, I think it's important that they understand their surroundings and be aware. You know, um, going to a university is different from where you grew up. And, and as you transition throughout the years here at the university, since your housing changes, your situation changes. Public safety wants to ensure that nothing like this incident happens again. But if so, students, landlords, and the community know how to handle it. If you are ever in any type of danger, be sure to call public safety at this number below. For The Pulse, Jackie Shampoo, Bridgeport. It's definitely reassuring hearing those words from public safety. Absolutely, and students deserve to be safe while studying here at Sacred Heart. I definitely agree. September 11th is a day that weighs heavily on the American heart. Everyone has their own way of honoring those who died on that tragic day. Here at Sacred Heart, an annual tradition takes place on the Chapel Quad. Will Pesic has the story. Some people will always remember how old they were, where they were, and who they were with on the morning of September 11th, 2001. Some were newborns. And some were not even born yet. But that does not mean none of us know what really happened that morning. It was the worst terrorist attack on American soil. Two commercial airplanes crashed into the World Trade Center in Manhattan. Another plane hit the Pentagon. And another, due to the heroics of United Flight 93, crashed into a field in Pennsylvania. On Saturday, September 11, 2021, 
the Sacred Heart College Republicans Club held their annual flag ceremony in honor of the 2,977 people who tragically lost their lives during the September 11th attacks. School President John Patillo was there to show his support and said a few words to the Sacred Heart student body. I think the importance of this memorial is that we not forget not only the people in the towers at the Pentagon or certainly in Pennsylvania, um, but that we remember those heroes who were born that day uh, and served and that we should not forget who they are and the families that have been left with a void. So it's important, especially for our students who probably none of them were born at the time, that this not be forgotten. The annual event took place in the Chapel Quad, and within minutes, the big grassy field was covered with small American flags placed by students and faculty in honor of the thousands of people who died that tragic morning two decades ago. Ryan Silverstein, the College Republicans Club president, said it meant a lot to him. Because being from the Tri-State area, he knows people who lost someone that day. And it was a good way for the Sacred Heart community to come together. Well, what this means to me, I think this really just represents a great opportunity for the Sacred Heart community to come together and honor those who fell in one of the worst terrorist attacks in American history. Although majority of the Sacred Heart student body were not born at the time, that did not stop them from coming out in waves to show their patriotism and show that we are all Americans. Coming here shows that we're all united, and especially since a lot of us weren't even alive for it. I was only one when it happened, but politics aside, everything aside, we're all Americans. And the turnout today really proves that that's just what we are. We're American. The event was a tremendous success. It was not just students and staff either. Athletic teams who had practiced that day made sure to take a few minutes out of their schedule to place flags in the upper quad. At the end of the event... President Ryan Silverstein gathered the group outside of the chapel and held a brief moment of silence for all those lost that day and even those who died in recent years due to underlying causes of the September 11th attacks. It is safe to say that the Sacred Heart community holds this day near and dear to their heart and it is an event that will not be going anywhere anytime soon. After the break, we will take you inside Sacred Heart's newest dining hall located in the Pioneer Village, formerly known as the Upper Quad. Welcome back to The Pulse. The construction of Pioneer Village is finally complete and a brand new dining hall opened for students this fall. Thea's Abbey is connected to the newest residential hall named for Thea Bowman. Jen Hallowell takes a closer look into all the new food stations and how the name Thea's Abbey was chosen. Thea's Abbey is located in Pioneer Village, formerly known as the Upper Quad. It is attached to Thea Bowman Hall. Thea's Abbey has various stations and options for eating all day. There's Breakfast & Co., which has an all-day grill, Deli on Park Ave with New York-style sandwiches, Sono, a Latin-inspired menu, a pizza and pasta station featuring handmade pastas, and stations for beverages. Since opening up, Thea's Abbey has been a very popular place to eat for students on and off campus. Um, hi, I'm Chris. I'm a junior here. Um, my favorite uh, thing about the new dining hall is the deli. Uh, it's nice to have some hot deli uh, sandwich options as opposed to just the boar's head and limbs. I'm Julia. I'm a freshman here. Um, I really like the pizza here at Thea Abbey's. The Abbey is named for Thea Bowman. At the age of 15, she became a nun for the Franciscan Sisters of Perpetual Adoration in 1952. She was the only African-American sister in the Franciscans at the time. A teacher and a scholar, the U.S. bishops voted for her cause for canonization three years ago. So why is it called Thea's Abbey? Well, an abbey is the building or the buildings occupied by a community of monks or nuns. And although Thea's Abbey will mainly be occupied by students physically, it looks just like a traditional abbey. If you haven't already, you should walk through these stores and come check out Thea's Abbey. It's open Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. and Saturday and Sunday, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. This is Jennifer for The Pulse. A greatly missed tradition for students, especially those 21 and over, is back and open on campus. 
After being closed for over a year, Red's, the on-campus pub, is inviting students back to enjoy classic pub food and your fan favorite beer, wine, or seltzer. Student Union Director and Pub Permittee Michael Moylan tells us what Red's has brewing this semester. Maisie Corvallo with the story. Red's is our on-campus pub. We serve beer, wine, full restaurant menu. We're completely student run, student managed, so all of your servers will be fellow students. Uh, the management staff is students. Uh, the programming staff that does all the programming, picking what type of events to have in here, uh, it's all run by your fellow classmates. It's your senior year. The countdown clock is ticking. Um, come make use of Reds. Uh, we're one of the few universities on the East Coast that have an on-campus pub. Uh, we are open Monday through Friday. We have tons of events going on throughout the semester. We have our Live at Red series, so we have all sorts of singers and performers coming. Uh, we do trivia, Monday night football. It's a really great place to come hang out, have a beverage with some food. The food here is top notch and a great place to relax. If you want to stay up to date in all of our events and what we have going on, please follow us on Instagram, Facebook, social media. Uh, we have events Monday, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays where we come in. Um, you can sign up right there, show us. Or we usually give out t-shirts and stuff like that if you follow us on social media. So come check us out. After two tropical storms hit the Northeast within one month, rain, rain, go away may be running through the minds of many. The 2021 season follows a record-breaking year for hurricanes and storms. Here's Colleen Schaefer with the story. With 12 storms already this year, five of them becoming hurricanes and three major category hurricanes, the one that welcomed SHU students returning to campus was Hurricane Ida. Many students have never seen anything like it. Students living in off-campus housing were left with flooding in both houses and cars and left dealing with the aftermath. Social media was buzzing with clips of flooding in both houses and on the streets. With several storms predicted, the end of this season could bring more weather-related challenges for students. The vast majority of scientists who study climate change believe it has impacted this season and will impact future ones. In recent years, the link to climate change has grown even stronger. The warmer it gets, the more ferocious and frequent tropical storms and hurricanes become. To talk more about climate change, I spoke with the president of the Environmental Club here at Sacred Heart, Jill Amari. Our club is focused on a lot of environmental and sustainable efforts on campus. This semester especially, we're going to focus on composting and our pollinator garden at West Campus. But there are a lot of other topics that come up in our club conversations, and one of those is climate change. Um, as I'm sure a lot of you have noticed, the weather patterns over the years have been changing due to burning of fossil fuels, which changes the atmosphere. And while we usually have a bad hurricane season, this year has been especially bad because hurricanes are becoming more frequent and more dangerous. And the only way that we can stop these storms from getting so bad and tackling climate change is if we work together as a team. And one way to do that is by joining the Environmental Club and coming to help us with our efforts. On campus, Dean Larry Wielk, Dean of Students, offered university assistance to students who had excessive damage to houses, books, and other personal belongings as well as to those who are short on food and other necessities. The university is stepping up and helping to reach out, weathering the storm together with the students. For The Pulse, Colleen Schaefer, Bridgeport. Well, some of these storms are really affecting the way Sacred Heart students have to live, especially those off campus. I know, I'm just hoping everyone was able to stay safe. After the break, see how Pioneer football is doing in the new season. We'll be right back. After all your hard work, the studying, practices, and rehearsals, you deserve the best for what's next, the best in Connecticut higher education. Outstanding nursing and health professions programs, premier learning facilities and world-class tech labs, a nationally ranked business school, modern residential, social, and recreational facilities, championship D1 athletics, and pro-level performing arts. Make your next step the best step. Apply now to Sacred Heart University. Welcome back to The Pulse. Now, Maddie is going to bring us to Campus Field to discuss the return of Sacred Heart football and how the team has had to adjust this year. Sacred Heart football is back in full swing after COVID shortened four-game series and NEC championship win last spring. 
Shu has a full schedule this season, including games against Bryant, Dartmouth, and Howard. I sat down with one of the team captains, DeAndre Bird, wide receivers coach Mark Clements, and running back coach Andre Barboza to discuss expectations for this season. I mean, I would say just kind of getting back and see if we can pick up you know, where we left off last spring. Um, you know, we have a pretty senior group for the first time in a while, uh, first time in the four you know, years that I've been here. Um, the previous, you know, 19 and 18 were younger guys. We had a couple older guys and put it together and, you know, had an unfortunate run at 18. So um, this spring was good because we got to see, you know, kind of who we are. And, um, you know, we're excited to see who, you know, who we are going to be going forward as a more senior group and, and kind of take care of business and get some wins. So I'm just kind of excited to see that growth and see if we can take the next step. You know, I would like to see this team be at their best individually as players and their best as a team. Um, I think if we take that aspect every single day, whether it's practice or games, I think we'll be where we want to be. Um, so I, I hope the intentions of this team are to continue to improve. That's probably the thing that I would say I would like to see most this season out of this team. Oof, this season, it's, it, it's been a fun one. Um, probably just spending time with my guys just because we don't know when our last game or when it's the last time we ever be together. We have a lot of seniority on defense. Uh, we're really close. We've been together for like four years. We don't know what next year holds, so we got to take it step by step and day by day. After these past few games with that star player, Julius Chestnut, the team has had to adjust its offensive game plan. Obviously, you know, it's, it's been a challenge, you know, with our adjustment, but um, from, you know, Julius being out and guys trying to find their roles, but, you know, then you look, you know, we don't skip a beat with Malik, you know, having a huge game, Offensive Player of the Week last week, and, you know, had some receivers step up on the perimeter, and, um, you know, Marquez is back to being, you know, Marquez, so I think, um, going forward, we have you know a great opportunity in front of us and a talented group. We just need to keep building on what we did last week. I mean, it's terrible to lose Juju because he's such a big part of his team and community. Um, smiling face, rock around campus, you miss it every day at practice. But I feel like it's a blessing in the sky just because of the simple fact that it made younger guys and other guys step up and showcase what they can do and their talents. It has been an uneven start to the season with two wins and one conference loss, but Sacred Heart fans are excited to just be able to go to the games in person and not have to distant watch on TV or the internet. The beer garden and tailgates in the parking lot are back, bringing tons of shoe students who didn't get to experience Pioneer Spirit at home last year. I'm Madeline Gerandola reporting from Sacred Heart University. Wow, Maddie, what a catch. Thanks, I guess all those years playing football in the backyard with my dad really paid off. But it was just exciting catching up with the team and the coaching staff. I know I'm excited to get back into the stands. Aren't we all? This year marks the 100th anniversary of the Community Theater in downtown Fairfield and Sacred Heart has raised the curtains and lit the lights just in time. Shane Haney has the story. For the past 10 years, downtown Fairfield has been missing its crown jewel. After nearly a century of welcoming guests to a world of art and culture, the community theater in the heart of Fairfield was shut down and abandoned until this past Labor Day. Labor Day weekend marked the grand reopening of this beloved theater, now dubbed the Sacred Heart University Community Theater. This beautiful marquee now lights up the corner of Post and Unquora Road in downtown Fairfield, and it's kind of hard to miss. As the opening ceremonies kicked into full swing, the theater was already showing off its full potential as an art house, not just with film screenings, but with live dance and musical performances. The movies and events are handled by Sacred Heart University graduate assistants. We help uh, make sure that things run smoothly, whether it be uh, movies that we're showing or live, event live events. We recently had uh, performances by our uh, local legends, so that was various artists from the surrounding community coming here and uh, playing instruments, singing. That's like one example of uh, live events that we might have. Just to tell you what we're doing, like we're, we just got the October films approved, so October is all Halloween films. So Wednesdays you have your older classic Halloween films, Fridays is your blockbusters, and then Sundays is my personal favorite, is everything that I pretty much grew up watching on Disney Channel is now on Sundays, so I will be making sure I am working here on Sundays, so. Mm -hmm. Plenty of Fairfield residents who were sad to see the theater close 10 years ago are equally as happy to see it open again. And I uh, look for movies all the time to bring my daughter with me and my family. For us, as with the community events, to be able to get dinner in town and have a theater in town and not have to drive 15, 20 minutes is, is a big plus. Yeah. So we're happy about it. 
Um, I remember taking my son to the movies here um, when he was little, and we have many fond memories of coming to birthday parties here and having birthday parties here, movie parties, when the kids were little, and we were really sad to see it close. It was like a little jewel of a theater, and I was very sad when it closed, but I heard that Sacred Heart had bought it and was reopening. It's gorgeous. It's a beautiful facility. It is. So we're, hopefully we're so, it does well. Yeah, we We're so happy to hear that it was reopening and what a nice job they've done. Yep. So, if you're looking for something to do, Sacred Heart offers an amazing movie watching experience. Just look for the big neon sign in downtown Fairfield, grab some popcorn, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. This is Shane Haney reporting for The Pulse. Back to you in the studio. All right, thank you, Shane. I definitely cannot wait to check it out. Looks like they have some great events coming up this year. Well, that's it for today. Thank you all for joining us for our first show of the semester. I'm Will Pesson. And I'm Madeline Jurandola, and we'll see you next time on The Pulse.